Welcome to Nikki's Crochet Podcast with a brand new episode and a brand new guest. Here you get to know the designers from a totally different perspective. But before we get started, quick reminders to subscribe to my channel as well as the guest channel. So let me introduce you to our new guest. Hi, Brianna. I am so excited Hi. for you to be here. How are you doing? I'm so excited to be here. I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. Excited because we have actually been friends for a long time. And I got to be honest with you, I was very fangirling you in the beginning. And that was Aww. before Infinity Crochet, which we'll talk about later. But I was looked up your, to your designs. I'm like, they're so pretty. How do you do this? Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. And then we started talking and we kind of became online friends, I guess. Uh, is that what we yeah, do now? Yeah, is so crazy that we can make friends that live so far away and even in different time zones. That's one of my favorite things about working in this industry is making new friends. I know. And I wish though we would be a little closer because I feel like we would be the best friends, like, because but you're on the other side of the country, but every, at some point Completely we have to get together. <laughs> I know we're going to have to make that flight at some point. It is like, and, and like, I know there's a lot of people online that are friends through this, through this amazing craft community. Yeah. And just like everyone else, sometimes it's always kind of scary when we message each other, we're like, Hey, do you know who I am? Hi. <laughs> we're always like, yes, thanks for messaging me. So it's if you yeah. are a crafting person, you've always want to mess with someone, do it. It's so worth it. It's so nice to have so many friends. Oh, big time. And I, I always feel weird. I don't even know if the designers know me and things like that, if, you know, but you've been in my bundles for a long time and I absolutely yeah. adore your patterns, but let's oh, start first with something that, you know, just some, some of you, some of the, the people that are listening here might not know you. So let's start with how did you actually get started with crocheting and knitting? Because you do both. So how did you get started? Who inspired you? So I grew up learning how to do some crochet, but it was very beginner level just as a teenager. And then of course I kind of dropped it for a while. And when I had my first child, I wanted to make him something for his photos. And I think a lot of people relate to that. You just really want to make something special for a new baby. Yeah. But um, my mom came to town and I started crocheting it. I just wanted like a, a simple little like basket thingy to put him in. And I went into labor, so I didn't finish it. <laughs> I told my mom not to finish it. And then she was just kind of like, yeah, I think you're going to need me to finish this for photos. <laughs> and so she left and then came back to help me again when he was just a few months old. And I was like, listen, we live in Orlando. I'm going to make him a Mickey hat. I'm going to take him to see Mickey Mouse and this cute hat. And it was horrible. It was, listen, I did it. I was happy about it, but it was like lopsided in one ear. So, I mean, you probably would look at it and be like, that's not, a, that's not Mickey. What is that? I mean, it was just awful, but that's okay. That's how we all start. I, yes. I really think when I, whenever you approach anything, your first one is not going to be perfect, but be proud of it because you did it and that's okay. Yes. And then it just took off from there. I just started making more things and I got into photography a bit for newborn photography. I knew a lot of photographers around here that were my friends and they would say, hey, can you make this? Can you make that? And I'd be like, yeah, I think I can. Or I can look up and see if there's a pattern. And then I had this one really, really special request that's near and dear to my heart. And that is my very, very first pattern. It is the boxer baby. Mm -hmm. um, I got, I was... I had had my second child. I'd been selling, you know, crochet items on Etsy. So I understand the whole, you know, we're going to sell on Etsy. We're going to do markets yeah. and I was killing it, but I had a new baby and I wanted to take some time off. So I told yeah. all the photographers, shut down my Etsy shop. Like, listen, I'm tired. <laughs> and I had a photographer message me and say, listen, I, I have a baby coming tomorrow. He is coming home from the hospital, but we're not sure he's going to live. And it was very much like, oh, it was, it was just, my heart was in it. And she was like, they want a really special outfit for him. We just don't know. Sometimes doctors don't know a certain medical conditions, what's yeah. going to happen in the coming weeks. So I stayed up all night. I thought about what to make him. My husband and I talked about it and it was actually kind of my husband's idea. He said, why don't, he's a fighter. So why don't we do a cute little boxing outfit? And I was like, oh, that's perfect. Well, yes. So I was literally tying on the ties on the mittens as I walked mm -hmm. through the front door to that photography session. And I got to meet Aiden, who, by the way, to this day is thriving. Oh. Um, so even, I know Aiden is such a cute fighter. I love seeing his like photos pop up. He's the same age as my second one. He is doing extraordinary. He is learning to continue to walk and such, but he smiles, he laughs, he is just joy. The joy just comes through with him. So it really fit. I love seeing his newborn picture to now. 
the outfit really fit. And then I started getting messages. My post blew up and I had so many people who wanted to make that outfit for, you know, babies in the NICU yeah. or all the little fighters out there who are fighting hard. And, um, I couldn't keep up with orders obviously. And I, and then someone said, you should write this pattern. Like there's no way I could ever make that that many outfits. Yeah. So I did. I wrote my first pattern and then it just snowballed from there. And then I decided to pick up the knitting needles. I almost threw them in the fire a few times because <laughs> <laughs> going from crochet to knit, if anyone's ever done it at first, it can feel very intimidating. And I remember yeah. thinking like, how do people use two sticks? This is no, <laughs> like, like can this makes sense. Two sticks does not. Yeah. And I, I think the challenge just, I had to do it and now I love it. I love both. I love both crafts. I love yarn. I love crochet. I love knit. And then I ventured into knit patterns a bit. And um, I still stay more strong in crochet because it's yeah. my first love. You know, I don't want to cheat on it too much. <laughs> but I am certainly in love with knit as well. Oh my yeah. God. I love that. For me, it's kind of reversed. I knit it first, but I haven't picked up my knitting oh. needle in, I don't know how many years, 10 to 15 years, maybe <laughs> it's nice. been a long time. But I, once I fell into crochet, I'm in it. And it's, that's yeah. probably why it's your first love too. It's like, it just yeah. feels natural and you can go into corners. You can make it easy. You, you're not so stuck in a specific position. <laughs> like, well, you're not dropping stitches. I will say that yes. dropping stitches is very scary. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Frogging and crochet is not so scary. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and that's that's another whole issue. You have to have all of them at the same time, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm okay with Tunisian crochet. That's how far I'm going to go at this point when it comes there to you go. Hey, that's, that's like the marriage of both worlds, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But let's talk about your photography for a second because uh, I, I think it's like so many don't know that, that you have so much. I don't even know. Do you have a photography degree or something? Because you're so perfect when it comes to photography. So tell oh, us about thank it. You. I, I mean, I don't think I am, but <laughs> so when I was doing, I do have an art degree from university. And when I was dabbling in many passions, that's usually what a lot of us do. Yeah. Um, I ended up kind of straddling two industries and that was crochet design and photography. And I know so many amazing photographers here in central Florida. And I just ended up in a lot of clubs and groups and I would end up at their photo shoots and I would learn so much from them. Oh, and it was just kind of, be yeah, it's so, it's so nice. It's just like when you have a knitting club or a crochet club yeah. and when you're meeting up, you pick up little tips and tricks and like yes. what works best or like what's the best tool for this or that. And I started doing photography on my own. And it got to be a lot. Um, yeah. Running two businesses, I decided was completely crazy. <laughs> and I started to get, I at first told my husband, listen, I'm only going to take like one client a month just for yeah. fun, just to kind of keep my skill building going. Yeah. And then I started like taking one client a week and then it started being more than one client a week. And I was like, I have to choose. Yes. And so I made that very difficult choice. It was not easy because I do love photography, but yeah. I chose design. It was a bit more flexible for my schedule and I still get to use photography. Yes. So. Exactly. And you have so many props. Like you have like a room full of props because I always feel like your your setup is always so perfect. It looks like a magazine. Aww. Like especially when I think about the first thing that always pops in my mind are things like for fall and Thanksgiving and Christmas. You have every so perfectly set up. It's like she must have so many <laughs> props everywhere. Like how do you I what? Don't know if I do. So I, I will say whenever you do those, I love, I love, and I'll start sharing these more, the behind the scenes where you're like, okay, this looked pretty. But like six inches out of the frame was a complete hot mess. <laughs> the dishes aren't done. Like, you know, you're like clearing off counter space in order yeah. to take a photo. But we've got dirty dishes over here. That is my house, too. It is like so normal to have a hot mess right off camera. And I do tend to like when I do take a photo, you'll find sometimes I'm just running around the house grabbing stuff like whatever I think my or I go outside and I'll grab I'll like rip up bushes and my husband will be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just need some props. Like, it's just nature. It will just look good. And he's like, okay, like, if you want that shrub, you feel free. And it's just it grows back in Florida. So yes, it, it really I do have a lot in storage in the attic per holiday. But I don't know if you deal with this or other people feel this way, but whenever it's like, okay, like right now I'm doing this, but you know, it's not going to release for a while. And, yes. and when I look at my husband, I'm like, can, can, is there any way I could get any Christmas out of the attic? Like I yes. just, he's like, but it's like July. Why do we need to get Christmas out of the attic? And I'm yeah. like, well, I kind of want something. And he's like, no, <laughs> that's not going to happen. This is Unless why I was 
that's why I was asking, you must have so many props because for me, like that, I exactly have that issue. It's like, I need to do Christmas stuff now, but I like, I can't have, my husband's going to go bonkers if I pull the Christmas trees out. It's like, right? I, oh I do tend to now, I don't know if you do, but I, den- I tend to put my Christmas tree up earlier than I ever have yes. just because I get too anxious for those beautiful photos. Plus I love the holidays and I yes. love all the holiday decor. So I'm like, let's yeah. pull it all out. Yeah. It's going to vomit all over the house and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Um, but for the rest of the year, I do tend to just, um, I'll, I'll borrow stuff. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I'll, I'll like, my neighbors probably think I'm absolutely crazy, <laughs> really. But I'll be at their house and I'm like kind of taking it all in. I'm like, oh, that would be, yeah, that would be nice <laughs> for a photo. And then I'll message them like, hey, can I come grab that bowl? Like, I really liked it, but I don't want to store. I don't want to buy something like that or yes. store it. Yes. I have a blanket recently that I messaged my neighbor across the street because she has gorgeous stuff. And I was like, listen. Can I just come photograph at your house? And she was like, come on over. So that's the other thing I do is I will borrow like other people's houses. And I've gotten less shy about it because I find people don't mind. They don't care. That's true. Like I would be flattered if someone was like, can I use this? I'm like, yes, I don't care. Oh my God. I think I have the wrong friends. (laughs) (laughs) I did get lucky. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I totally love that idea of using someone else's home. It's like, I always thought about, it's like, I need to figure out, like, do I need to find a, a photographer? Or like, how do I take pretty pictures like this? Like, I'm like literally think about, I need a new sofa, like just to make this work. And I'm like, what? No, use your neighbor's sofa. Use your neighbor's <laughs> sofa. I use my sister's and my neighbor's all the time. Cause mine is not picture like pretty I feel like it's more of like a reclining movie sofa because I gave in to my husband and so I'm like well I guess I'm using the neighbor's sofa for photos because ours is not photogenic (laughs) I love it but give us some tips so since we just talked about photography give us like one or two tips that you can give someone who rather that's physical or digital things that they sell let's say Etsy or even us designers give us a couple tips that you would say hey this is great for photography if you need something yes yes so First off, your cell phone's amazing. Like we are way different from where I started with photography, where if you want to take an amazing picture, you do not need to spend 10 grand to do so. You really, really don't. I promise you, you have what you need in your house. And if you don't, I will tell you the only thing you need to go buy is white poster board and you're good because natural lighting can work for you. So go to a window, let all that light flood in. Yeah. Um, the backdrop, it doesn't have to be massive. You don't need to go buy a ton of props. Sometimes simple photos can be best. And then yeah. you take your whiteboard and you face like if your window's here, your whiteboard's going to go here. Yeah. And what that does is it bounces light back mm-hmm. and that will make the colors and the lighting so pretty. Yeah. Also, it's okay to like adjust and take again. Every time you see one of us designers put a photo online, I guarantee it was not our first shot. No. <laughs> I'm like not our first shot. Three times the amount, it's like 30, 40, yeah. 50 shots per pattern. Constantly yeah. running out of storage because I took 50 yes. photos of one item. Yes. So and you can like adjust and change and look at it, but you don't need to spend a lot of money. Um, if you do have a camera, that's great. But like I said, a cell phone anymore sometimes works better than a camera. Yes. It, they really do. Yeah. So just go out and see what you can find. And if you do want to photograph outside, cloudy days are amazing. Sometimes yes. people are looking for sun. Do not look for no. sun. Sun is so hard. So either go out on a cloudy day or go yeah. one hour before sunset. And yes. it will be so easy and exactly. so easy to take photos So or find some shade. So it exactly. doesn't have to be an expensive adventure to have a pretty yeah. photo. Um, I usually take my sister out when I do some modeling. Um, like I did for one of my popular patterns, which is the traveler. We'll talk about that later. I went to a local national park that's near us and we just go one hour before sunset and it yeah. is not even hard. Yeah. I don't have to like stress about her moving around too much. You can just stand, you can just shoot. And I yes. promise the colors will be fantastic. Oh, I agree. That's really photographers don't, it's not about the equipment. It's just yeah. about knowing what the natural light's going to react like it, when that natural yeah. light's going to work for you exactly it's you don't want to fight light exactly it, like, is. You, it can be like my husband even he i'm training him to do photos of me because you know i'm the oh nice good luck with that around. let me know because i don't like when my husband does photos of me every time i feel like we get in a fight over it it's, so I know you know from you we have a little private thing i'm gonna share this now because it's gonna be public at some point anyways but right. he takes okay. better pictures when he's angry <laughs> 
oh really that's interesting <laughs> seriously like there's times oh. where he's so upset because he hates it he hates this i'm like he knows though that i can't take pictures that way the way i want to on my own right so he gets upset about it but then it turns out i look through the pictures and like you know your best work is when you're angry <laughs> Okay, so maybe that's what I need to do. I just need to make him angry so he takes the best photos. That's hilarious. It's hilarious. I don't know how this turned out to be that way, but it worked, it worked out that way. So it's pretty cool. Sometimes I really think there should be like a designer behind the scenes show because yes. people probably laugh. It went, Like even just the conversation between your husband, I know if it's anything like mine, I'm like, that's the wrong angle. And he's like, what angle do you, what angle? I'm, I'm right in front of you, you know? <laughs> And it's just a hilarious thing. We always need drinks yes. after because I feel like I stress him out. And he's just like, just tell me what you want. And I'm like, I want a good photo. <laughs> but it's funny because he's technically in front of the camera. For those who don't know, he works also in media, right? So yeah, he's he also does. the person in front of the camera, not behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do you guys share things with each other, like tips re re in regards to marketing things? Because he's in media. I mean, he probably gets something. He's in there. media. Yeah. He just switched jobs, which I think will be beneficial for me in several ways. Um, so he was a news sports anchor. So he would put together stories and casts. And he has been amazing for me because he's set up all my equipment in my office. He tells it how to talk to each other. He does all the technical stuff. And he also taught me how to do like video editing and um, a lot of the shortcuts for that on the keyboard. There are times he'll still walk into my office and be, he'll be like, why are you doing it that way? And I was like, what way? I'm just, I'm just doing what I'm doing. And he'll be like, shortcut. And I'm like, oh, that saves me so much time. Yes. So those little things I do love. And now he's going to be working in PR for Disney. So he'll be doing oh, cool. a lot more of the, you know, the PR side, the marketing side. So I'm really mm -hmm. excited to like kind of steal some tips and tricks from him with that. And that will be fun too. So yeah, he's um he has a fun job too. Sports, he's very sports oriented, which yeah. is way different than crochet. Yes. But a lot of that stuff can translate. Yes. So, have yeah. you ever inspired him to pick up the yarn and the hook? Or maybe the oh. needles or or maybe your kids? Or not at all. So the kids are kind of into it. I keep telling them, like, I'm trying to motivate them, like, hey, if you learn to crochet really good as a teenager, mommy will pay you to make stuff for me. <laughs> and they're kind of like, well, maybe I should learn. I cannot get my husband to, like, I can't get him to do it. I'll, but he will weave in my ends. I did oh. teach him to weave it. Yeah. So he will weave in the ends. And so sometimes I'll just, like, throw stuff to him and be like, can you weave in those ends? And he was like, sure. But I think for him and I, the fun thing is, like, and, and this this is the same thing for everyone in the crochet and knit industry. Sometimes opposites can attract. Yes. And so whenever I'm like, do you want to like learn to crochet? He's like, do you want to like watch the basketball game? I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Like we kind of balance each other yes. out where we have our own interests, but yes. we have a lot of our thing in common is knocking down walls and yeah. doing home renovation. We love doing that together. Oh, I love that. So. Yeah, That's we can kind of bring together our creative sides in different ways. You but have a I, gorgeous yeah. office. I mean, and I know, I think it's in a garage. Am I right? It's, it's a garage. Like, yeah, it's amazing. You have to come see it. I think, I feel like it just, once again, it looks amazing on camera, but <laughs> a behind the scenes photo, I'm like, yeah, there's a garage door over there with an entire track system. It's not so pretty. <laughs> but right here, you're right. It's gorgeous. It's not Ikea yeah. shelving and a little bit of paint. It's amazing what you can do behind yes. the scenes to make things functional exactly. and pretty. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, mine is in the corner of a master bedroom. <laughs> I look yeah, at my bed. And it's a weird, like color organization going on there. It's amazing behind you. You've got like that. I'm horrible at that. I try. Yeah. And then it just looks like the rainbow vomited all over. So, oh my gosh. I yes. I, your color organization. I think once a quarter or maybe once in six months, I have to like that my ADD in me wants to reorganize. And currently it looks like a mess all around. Nobody sees that. Luckily, there's so many boxes on the floor. Uh, I keep barely walking here, but I have to clean up. Like every six months, I have that urge to completely get rid of things like my closet, okay. everything. The next time that happens, I'll buy you a plane ticket and you can come do that in here. <laughs> I'm right there. Like, I just want to finish a certain project and then I'm going to go in my closet. I'm like, right there. <laughs> I need that in my life. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I want to talk about your Infinity Crochet because you okay. blew up when Infinity Crochet happened, but I haven't really seen much of it lately. I know that you no, dibble dabbled no. everywhere and you absolutely yeah. like you explore your creativity. But let's talk about like, how did you even, how did you start with this thing? And this is amazing. And I love it. Like, what happened here? 
Okay, so Infinity Crochet is just a different way of working cables we hadn't yeah. seen before. It's so that we can, if we wanted to, we can make them reversible. Yeah. Um, they kind of dance across the fabric. We, we can really make them travel quickly because there's no holes or gaps behind them. So you can yeah. use them on bags and stuff like that and not have to worry about pennies falling out. Um, that came, that actually developed in a time of my personal life that was extremely trying. I have a special needs son and it was his first year at kindergarten. Did not go well. I ended up becoming almost a full-time advocate for him. No regrets yeah. to all those moms out there who feel like torn in a million directions. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Crochet is always there for you. Oh, if you have to put it down, you put it down. When you need to pick it up, you pick it up. Yeah. So I came out with Infinity Crochet during a very trying time. And sometimes I feel like I didn't, I wasn't able to give the attention I wanted to, but it was still so cool. And it's out there. And I am doing um, a few patterns with it, hopefully this next year. Um, but I think there is something about me that I do that I've learned to accept. And that is like, there are some people who, as designers, they just do bags or they just do garments yeah. or they just, yeah. and I have never been that way. I always jump nope. from craft to craft to craft. My husband still says he's shocked that I'm still doing the crochet thing full time because before that it was like one month I'm felting the next yes. month I'm photography. Yes. So I think crochet allows my artistic chaos to happen and function well because yes. there's so much to explore. Yes. There's just so much to explore and I'll get stuck in these phases of exploration and I love it and I'm rolling with it and I don't fit inside a box and that's okay. None of us truly, really do. Yeah. So um, I did it for a time and it has been kind of a bit on the back burner taking a break as I've explored some color work. I'm currently completely just enthralled with something else I figured out that I'm exploring that will come out this fall that I don't think has ever been seen before. So yeah, I, I think I love the challenge of like, well, can you do it that way? Yeah. You know, like, couldn't you, but how, and every single time I've done something like this, yeah. I, the behind the hours that I've spent swatching and throwing yeah. swatches and swatching and throwing swatches are insane, but I can't, I can't help myself. That's just the creative side. Um, I figured something out this year that I've been working on for a long time. And once I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, how did I not see that before? <laughs> it's so easy. Why did that take me so long? I but know. I think a lot of me having that knit and crochet aspect. Yeah. I love both. But for some reason, I, I want to bring crochet's knit look. I don't know why we're obsessed with it in crochet. We yes. just are. Like, we'll crochet and we want that knit look. Yes. And I think that's where Infinity Cables was, is I was watching all these crochet, yeah. like knit cables, and I'm like, but like, we can't really do that in crochet. Yes. And I wanted to find a way to like, not invent the wheel, but reinvent the wheel a little bit to where we yeah. can do a bit more. Um, I've been to a lot of conferences. I've been around a lot of people and companies where they'll say everything in crochet has been invented. And I'm like, then nope. you don't know my friends. No, no, no. I'm always like, you don't know my friends, my <laughs> friends and me, we're amazing. And we're coming out with like new creative ways to do stuff yeah. all the time that have never been seen. And it's so, so, so exciting. Yeah. And I love all the designers I work with because you all are so creative too. And whenever yeah. I see someone release something in a different way, in a new way, yeah. and I've seen Nikki do some incredible things where Thank you. you're like, it's not just a bag. I, it's, it's a bag that can also like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I have uh, like a whole tips and tricks ebook. Like I have so many tips and tricks in there. Then I have a knit look ebook with all these what? knit styles, like anything that looks like, because I'm the same way. But for me, it's more that I, I love how knitting look like because I was a knitter, but yeah. I don't want to knit. I want to crochet. Yeah. So that's the idea behind that. But oh my gosh, but I have the same thing regarding inventing new things. Like I love the thermal stitch, but I also like linked crochet. Have you ever combined the two? It is, I have it. It is amazing because you find, you, like you realize when you get bigger in a stitch, even for the thermal stitch, you suddenly get the gaps again, even though it's the right. thermal stitch. But if you now right. combine it with linked crochet, like, okay. you put it back it together like and right. you're like, what? So I do all these inventing things in my membership all the time because yeah. they're like asking me things like, what about this? What about this? And then my brain starts triggering. It's like, oh, we can maybe combine this. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. And I get asked all the time. I'll do like, I think I did a a lace sleeve cable knit yeah. like sweater years ago yeah and i still get people to comment like can you please do a crochet mimic and i'm like yeah. i really just like it's not the same it's not yeah. but then in my head it haunts me and i'm like but like 
Could I? Maybe? Yeah. And you can't get that out of your head and you just keep thinking yes. through those stitches and then yes. bam, something happens. So I'm really excited to continue to explore that and just keep reintroducing things to myself. Yeah. And it's the challenge of like, yeah, I, I want to make that happen for you. I really do want to do like that knit yeah. look sweater and crochet. I just haven't figured it out yet. And that but, is one thing that we always promote too, is it takes time. It just takes time. Yes, but I do want to kind of bring that up right now, what you just mentioned, that going from crochet to knitting looks like you always start with, knit, with with crocheting and maybe do a knitting. But I see like a lot more of your patterns being converted. Is that because you want to or because your audience triggered you to? And like, how do you even have the time for that? Holy smokes. I mean, that's I know, a lot I, of time. <laughs> I know. I, I think a lot of times for me, it's triggered. 50 50. So sometimes yeah. I'll see something in knit and I'm like, mm, I want to do that in crochet. Mostly <laughs> I start with crochet and then I'll like do the yeah. knit. But um, I, I really think for me, it's like it tends to happen when I start missing my knitting needles. Like if mm -hmm. I've been crocheting for months on end, yeah. then I'll make one thing and I'm like, wait, this would be really, really simple to convert. Yeah. And I like the idea of that. And I really want to pick up my needles. So let's go ahead and do it. Perfect. Um, I, I still find that most people gravitate towards me for crochet, mm -hmm. but every once in a while it'll shock me and I'll have like a knitting pattern that just booms more than the crochet. And I'm like, okay, so people do like this mimic thing so that they can choose. Cause I, I don't know if you've seen this trend, but more and more I've been seeing people like what Marley says by crafty, they yeah. can do both. They can do knit yeah. and they can do crochet. And I love that. And I want like, yeah. I want to give people the option. And I also, I think I just love the challenge. I love the challenge of like, how similar yeah. can I make these? Yeah. And my favorite day was when there was a woman who was a little bit cranky. It's fine. <laughs> We're all cranky. Yeah. And she was arguing on one of my posts that it was not crochet. It was knit. Oh, but it was a crochet pattern. Yeah. And she was like, she, she wouldn't let it go. She kept saying like, I know knit. This is not crochet. Yeah. You are lying. And I'm like, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I swear. <laughs> like, here's a video of it being made. You can yeah. visually see the crochet hook. Yeah. And she was so angry, but in a way, it made me super happy. <laughs> I get it because you're like, oh my God. I mean, you baffled someone. That's really cool, I right? Told her. <laughs> and I mean, that's a big accomplishment. It's kind of a compliment at the same time. But I, I get the idea of combining crafts together because I I was a painter and, and sketcher when I when I first like started. Like I, my whole family's crafty. But I also love sewing. My mom had a sewing machine. So I have a sewing machine. So for me, it's more that idea is like, I hate sewing like like by hand. Yeah, I broke up so, with my sewing machine. So I'm like, I, like, I, I want to combine this. Like if I could, I would put in every bag a lining because I just yeah. love the idea of combining these two things. But I also get my inspiration from knitting. I, I'm not a knitter anymore. I'm not a knit designer, but- No, I no, love... once a knitter, always a knitter. Yeah. You're still a knitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's technically true. But what I do is, uh, one of the things that scares me uh, always is because we're in business is uh, copying people. And I don't like that. I don't want to copy people. So I make sure when I go on Pinterest and get inspired, if I need inspiration or motivation, I always type in knit patterns because it was like, if I can find it in knit, I can probably figure out how to do it in crochet. So that's how my brain works. I even sometimes go to sewing because I have so many functional patterns, you know, with pockets and all kinds of things. And it's like, yeah. I, if I, if there's a sewing yeah. version, I can do it in crochet. Take that. Yeah. So, totally. And we deserve that in crochet. We deserve to have all those like really cool, unique yeah. things. And like, there's so much inspiration across the crafting world. That's what makes it super fun. And I think for you and I, we love that challenge of being like, all right, so this really cool bag that somebody <laughs> made that was sewing, like, could we do that with yarn? Yeah. Why not? Let's yeah. go for it. Exactly. <laughs> but let's talk about that beautiful sweater that you kind of uh, talked to me in the beginning about. Uh, yeah. Talk about it because it's, it's amazing. So this sweater blew up when I did it. It's called the Traveler Fair Isle sweater. It was when I was really getting into color work design, but a lot of it was because it's a sweater made top down and you get this beautiful circle yoke. And I took a photo of it and it just like booms everywhere. And then everyone was so excited to make it. But I think I really like it because it explored crochet color work mm -hmm. that was a knit mimic. Oh. So the sweater does look like the knit stitches by using those um, center single crochet stitches or waistcoat stitches. 
uh, and it's really fun to do. It's also quite simple. It's not yes. an intricate color work, but the way it comes together, I've seen people make this one woman made five. I mean, like I haven't even made five, <laughs> but it's like fantastic that she's like gifting all of them. And I love every single time she does it because you can just switch up yeah. where your color placement is and it looks like a new sweater. Um, yeah, it was fun. I think it was just really, really fun. I've done a couple since. And then it's it, sometimes I think as a designer, we want to venture into the next yeah. thing. And at that point, I hadn't done a ton of garments like I have. Yeah. I done quite a few, but I, I'd never done something like that in color work in a garment. So for us, it's a bit of a risk. Yes. We're like, can I make this work? I think we <laughs> go into it knowing like I'm going to frog a thousand times. <laughs> I'm gonna like I'm gonna open up my calculator a million times. Yeah. I'm gonna figure out the shaping. Um, but once again, it's just that challenge yeah. of I was like, okay, I've been doing color for a long time. I've kind of been sticking to the easier construction. What about a sweater? Yeah. And it was so much fun. And I want to do more. I and we never have enough time. <laughs> That's true. I need more time in a day. Oh my goodness. I, I totally yes. agree. Oh my gosh, Brianna, it was so amazing for you to be here. I absolutely loved you as a guest. For anyone who needs links, especially the sweater or anything else, make sure you subscribe to her newsletter, her channel, anything, because she's amazing. You want to have the stuff. Yeah. And uh, I leave everything down below in the description. Thank you for being here, Brianna. I appreciate Thanks you so much. Thanks for having me. So fun chatting. It was amazing. I hope to see everyone else here next week again. I'll see you then. Bye. Bye.